Welcome all Twilight fans, Scott here, and today we'll be finding out if this card right here can unlock a good ray tracing experience for your Altwide resolution. We'll be testing this Zotac Gaming RTX 4070 Ti in 5 ray tracing games at 4 different Altwide and Super Altwide resolutions to see if $800 is enough to open the Altwide ray tracing door. Everything was tested on my test system featuring an AMD R7 5800X 3D CPU with 32GB of 3200MHz CL14 memory and running Windows 11 with the latest NVIDIA game ready drivers. Let's start things off with Cyberpunk 2077, the can it run crisis of our time, and NVIDIA's golden child for showing off ray tracing. This game was tested using the Ultra Ray Tracing preset. Starting off with our 3440x1440p ultra-wide resolution, we see the RT results delivering an unacceptable 35fps average, 52% slower than the raster results. Turning on DLSS quality nets us a 72% extra performance, rescuing this game and delivering 60fps average, and an acceptable 1% low. Moving to our 3840x1600p ultra-wide resolution, we see the RT results now at an unplayable 28fps average. 54% slower than the raster results. Turning on DLSS quality gets us 85% more performance, which falls shy of getting us to smooth gameplay, leaving the average in acceptable range and the 1% lows in unacceptable range. At our 5120x1440p super ultra-wide resolution, we see the RT results affected by the low VRAM of the 4070Ti, with a 21fps average and worse than expected 13fps for the 1% low, 59% slower than the raster results. When we turn on DLSS quality, we see the memory constraints relieved, with DLS delivering 112% more performance, still only delivering unacceptable FPS for both averages and 1% lows. Finally, at our 5120x2160 ultra-wide resolution, we see the RT results further affected by the low VRAM, with bad stuttering throughout the run and the actual time the run took being extended by several seconds due to how poorly it ran. We still see truly unplayable 14 FPS. When we turn on DLSS quality, we see the halving of the resolution, relieve the memory constraints, and performance jumps 137%, still providing nowhere near an enjoyable experience. It gets quite close to the RAS performance, which is still shackled by some of the memory constraints. While the 4070 Ti was able to be recommended for both the 1440p and 1600p ultra-wide resolutions in our raster test, it only gets a pass here since you will need to resort to balanced DLSS in our 1600p resolution. And we can clearly see that our Super Altwide and 4K Altwide are beyond what this card was built for. Next up we have one of the OG ray tracing games, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Here is a great example of how far we have come with ray tracing grunt. Starting off with our 3440x1440p ultra-wide resolution, we see the RT results delivering a nice high refresh rate of 92fps for the average, 28% slower than the raster results. Turning on DLSS quality nets us 39% extra performance matching the raster results for the average but with significantly lower 1% lows. Moving to 3840x1600 ultra-wide resolution, we see the RT results now in smooth range with an 78fps average. 29% slower than the raster results. Turning on DLSS quality gets us 44% more performance, which knocks things back up to high refresh rates, faster than the raster average, but slower than the 1% lows. At our 5120x1440p super ultra-wide resolution, we see the RT results maintain a smooth refresh rate at 67 FPS for the average, 29% slower than the raster. When we turn on DLSS quality, we see a 49% more performance, which knocks things back up into high refresh rates faster than the average, but now with a 1% low close to their raster results. Finally, at our 5120x2160 ultra-wide resolution, we see the RT results dip into acceptable range at 47 FPS, 30% slower than the raster results. When we turn on DLSS quality, we get an additional 64% performance for a better than raster average and a 1% low that keeps everything above 60. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider, we see the 4070 Ti deliver playable RT frame rates up to our super ultra-wide resolution, and when DLSS quality is used, things get as fast as very high refresh rates, with the 1% lows never dropping out of smooth range, though we do see much higher frame variance than the raster results. Next up is a game for our racing fans. It's Forza Horizon 5 played on its extreme preset with extreme ray tracing turned on. Starting off with our 3440x1440p ultra-wide resolution, we see the RT results delivering a nice high refresh rate of 95fps for the average, 7% slower than the raster results. Turning on DLSS quality nets us a meager 9% extra performance, barely scooting us past the raster results. 
Moving to 3840x1600p ultra-wide resolution, we see the RT results now in smooth range, with an 88 FPS average, 7% slower than the raster results. Turning on DLSS quality gets us 10% more performance, which knocks us back up into high refresh rates. At our 5120x1440p super ultra-wide resolution, we see the RT stay at a nice smooth 80 FPS for the average, 7% slower than the raster results. When we turn on DLSS quality, we see 11% more performance, staying in smooth range for both the average and the 1% low. Finally, at our 5120x2160 ultra-wide resolution, we see the RT results hang on to smooth gameplay at 69 FPS. When we turn on DLSS quality, we get an additional 14% performance for a better than raster average, with a smooth 1% low. We finally have a game where the RTX 4070 Ti looks good all the way down the stack, with a performance that honestly doesn't even need DLSS to be great. Next up is the new action RPG for Spoken, played on its Ultra preset. Starting off with our 3440x1440p ultra-wide resolution, we see the RT results delivering an acceptable 52 FPS average, 10% slower than the raster results. Turning on DLSS quality nets us 33% extra performance, giving us a 70 FPS average and an acceptable 1% low for a better than raster experience. Moving to our 3840x1600p ultra-wide resolution, we see the RT results still in acceptable range, with a 45 FPS average, 10% slower than the raster results. Turning on DLSS quality gets us 38% more performance, which gets us back to smooth gameplay averages of 63 FPS, but at 1% low, stuck in unacceptable range. At our 5120x1440p super ultra-wide resolution, we see the RT results affected by the low VRAM. Not in the frame rate, but in the visuals, with Forspoken dumping all the high res texture detail to maintain stutter free performance. At 40 FPS, 9% slower than a raster average. When we turn on DLSS quality, we don't get any relief from the poor texture issue, with DLSS delivering 39% more performance, only delivering an acceptable FPS for the average and an unacceptable 1% low. At our 5120x2160 ultra-wide resolution, we see the RT results still looking terrible thanks to the low VRAM, delivering only 32 FPS, 10% behind the raster performance. When we turn on DLSS quality, performance jumps 55%, still not providing an enjoyable experience. Getting over 60 FPS averages at 3440x1440 and 3840x1600 is not bad in this game. But we see again that the 4070 Ti seems to have a hard resolution limit for more demanding games thanks to its low video memory. We have Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy played on its Ultra preset with ray traced reflections and transparent reflections turned on. Starting off with our 3440x1440p ultra-wide resolution, we see the RT results delivering a smooth 78 FPS refresh rate for the average, 49% slower than the raster result. Turning on DLSS quality nets us a nice 59% extra performance to get very high refresh rates at 125 FPS. Moving to our 3840x1600 ultra-wide resolution, we see the RT results stay in smooth range with a 66 FPS average, 50% slower than the raster results. Turning on DLSS quality gets us 63% more performance, jumping up a performance tier to high refresh rates. At our 5120x1440p super ultra-wide resolution, we see the RT results fall into acceptable range with a 55 FPS average, 51% slower than the raster. When we turn on DLSS quality, we see 67% more performance, getting the average back to high refresh rates with smooth 1% lows. Finally, at our 5120x2160 ultra-wide resolution, we see the RT results sink into unplayable gameplay range at 39 FPS. 53% slower than raster. When we turn on DLSS quality, we see get an additional 79% performance for a smooth gameplay average and an acceptable 1% low. The RTX 4070 Ti manages to maintain a good play experience without upscaling on our two lower resolutions, and when DLSS quality is employed, the 4070 Ti delivers good gameplay up and down the stack. Let's round things up and make some determinations about this card's viability at our various resolutions. At our most popular resolution of 3440x1440, we see the RT results delivering smooth averages of 71 FPS and an acceptable 1% low of 57 FPS, 31% slower than the raster average. And the DLSS quality results are delivering high refresh rates of 97 FPS and a smooth 1% low of 73 FPS, 38% faster than the RT results. When looking at the individual game results, we see the RT results have two games in high refresh rates 
one in smooth, one in acceptable, and one in unacceptable refresh range. When we look at the 1% lows, we see three smooth games, one unacceptable, and one unplayable performance. Based purely on the RT results, the 4070 Ti would not get a recommendation, but luckily for it, we always test RT with upscaling quality mode on. With DLSS quality on, we see two very high refresh rate averages, one high refresh rate, and two smooth refresh rates. And we look at the 1% lows, we see three smooth and two acceptable refresh rates, which now cast the RTX 4070 Ti in a much more favorable light, making the 4070 Ti a recommended card for ray tracing at this resolution. Moving up in resolution to our 3440 by 1600 Ultra wide, we see the RT results delivering smooth averages of 61 FPS and an acceptable 1% low of 49 FPS, 32% slower than the raster average. And the DLSS quality results are delivering smooth refresh rates of 86 FPS and smooth 1% lows of 66 FPS, 41% faster than the RT results. When looking at the individual game results, we see the RT results have three games in smooth refresh rates, one in acceptable and one in unplayable for refresh range. When we look at 1% lows, we see two smooth games, one acceptable, one unacceptable, and one unplayable performance. Since the RT only results are mostly academic at this performance level, let's move up to the upscaling results. With DLSS quality on, we see three high refresh rate averages, one smooth and one acceptable refresh rate. And when we look at the 1% lows, we see three smooth and two unacceptable refresh rates. This one I'm going to classify as a passable ray tracing experience. With two of the five 1% lows in unacceptable range, it's not great, but some further settings optimization should get them back into acceptable range. Not the ideal starting place for a new purchase, but a passable one. Moving up in resolution to our 5120 by 1440p super ultrawide. We see the RT results delivering an acceptable average of 53 FPS and an unacceptable 1% low of 43 FPS, 33% slower than the raster average. And the DLSS quality results are delivering a smooth refresh rate of 76 FPS and a smooth 1% low of 60 FPS, 45% faster than the RT results. When looking at the individual game results, we see the RT results have two games in smooth refresh rates one acceptable, one unacceptable, and one unplayable refresh range. When we look at the 1% lows, we see one smooth game, one acceptable, two unacceptable, and one unplayable performance. And since these RT results are pretty terrible, let's move on to the upscaling results. With DLSS quality on, we see two high refresh rate averages, one smooth, one acceptable, and one unacceptable for refresh rate. And when we look at the 1% lows, we still see three smooth and two unacceptable refresh rates. We are now seeing frame rates so low with our heavier games that you'll have to do more than a little settings tweaking to recover. And the low vertical resolution of this monitor doesn't take so well to high levels of upscaling. I'm not sure how far you would have to go to solve some of the still present VRAM issues that have cropped up at this resolution. Therefore, the RTX 4070 Ti is not recommended if you plan to play on a 5120 1440p Super Ultrawide monitor. Moving to our highest resolution tested at 5120 by 2160, we see the RT results delivering unacceptable averages of 40 FPS and unacceptable 1% lows of 33 FPS, 32% slower than the raster average. And the DLSS quality results are delivering smooth refresh rates of 61 FPS and acceptable 1% lows of 50 FPS, 53% faster than the RT results, and slightly faster than the raster results. When looking at the individual game results, we see the RT results have one game in smooth refresh rates, one in acceptable, two in unacceptable, and one unplayable refresh rate. When we look at the 1% lows, we see one smooth game, two unacceptable, and two unplayable refresh rates. Since these RT results are quite terrible, let's move to the upscaling results. With DLSS quality on, we see three smooth, one acceptable, and one unacceptable refresh rate. And when we look at the 1% lows, we still see two smooth, one acceptable, one unacceptable, and one unplayable refresh rate. The RTX 4070 Ti is clearly not designed for this kind of resolution and should be avoided. Before we jump to the conclusion, I just want to say, if you enjoy Altwide content, please subscribe to this channel. It'll really help us out. And the faster I get monetized, the easier it'll be for me to buy new GPUs to test for all of you. And I want to give a special thanks to the few of you who have used our affiliate links to buy things. You are this channel's real heroes. Now, let's see how the 4070 Ti did. Without any upscaling, we see the RTX 4070 Ti producing unacceptable performance in 40% of the games at our lowest resolution of 3440 by 1440p, meaning that we're still quite some ways off from even high-end cards having enough raw power to do ray tracing. But thanks to some very smart marketing, no one really expects to use ray tracing without also using some kind of upscaling. 
and when we do use DLSS quality, we see the RTX 4070 Ti getting much better results. At our lowest resolution of 3440 by 1440 p we see the RTX 4070 Ti stay above 60 FPS when using DLSS, and it never drops below acceptable range in its 1% lows. We even see a couple of gains get into very high refresh rate territory above 120 Hz, making for an experience that most people would be quite happy with. Even the next step up resolution of 3840 by 1600 we see a decent showing where no games average falls below acceptable range, though we do see two 1% lows fall into unacceptable range, but most people would be willing to turn on DLSS balance and move on with their life unflustered. Moving to our top two resolutions of 5120 by 1440 and 5120 by 2160, we see the 4070 Ti's low VRAM become even more of an issue than it was in our raster testing. While DLSS's halving of the render resolution does help with some of the bottlenecks, it doesn't solve all of them making the 4070 Ti wholly unsuited for these resolutions. As for pricing, the RTX 4070 Ti is hovering around the $830 mark, making it by far the best price performance ray tracing card on the market. So, if you have a 3440x1440 or a 3840x1600 monitor, this is the best way to get a solid ray tracing experience for the least amount of money. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and stay tuned for the ray tracing comparison between the 4070 Ti and the RX 7900 XT. And if this wasn't enough ray tracing performance for you, check out the ray tracing video for the RTX 4080 here. Thanks for watching and have a great day.